Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Cards with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev. My name is Birigi. And today we are not in Kenya. Today we are in Mumbai, India, visiting Mahinda and Mahinda Limited, the headquarters of this great Indian company. And of course, they are coming soon to Kenya with a big project. But first things first. Let's check out the news. On to our first news item, and of course we are in India. So what brought us here is the fact that Mahindra and Mahindra are establishing an assembly facility at ABA Mombasa. Guys, this is massive, Mr. Murigi. How massive is this project? Well, it's going to be multi-million shilling project that they're doing over here yes. in conjunction with the Simba Corporation uh -huh. at AVA. They're going to be assembling the Scorpio pickup, so they're going to start with commercial vehicles. And we've had some rumors that later on, they might decide, depending on the volumes they're able to sell, to switch into the passenger vehicles. So that XUV 500, the XUV 300, and that new XUV 100 yes. may be on offer at some point in the future. And remember, this is part of the Big Four agenda, supporting local manufacturing. And this is so important for Kenya because it will create jobs and, of course, grow our industrial base, which is very, very important. And obviously, Mahindra and their local partner, Simba Corp, have invested a lot of money, close to a quarter of a billion shillings in this facility, just to make sure that you have the right product for this country. So stay tuned. We'll go to Mombasa and see the launch of this particular facility. On to our second news item, and we've just seen the first week of Formula One testing concluded in Barcelona, and I can tell you a lot of controversy. Mr. Mirigi, I was scrolling down the interwebs and I saw something interesting on Lewis Hamilton. As he was approaching a corner, he was pulling the steering wheel and returning it back again after the corner. That is something called the dual axis system, and people are actually you know, surprised that Mercedes have actually done that development game. What do you think about Mercedes? Is that a threat? towards uh, the domination of Formula One this year? Well, I mean, they had to do something about the car. This is a very interesting situation here because the rules against what you can do in a Formula One car are so incredibly tight. Yes. So it's actually very interesting that they managed to get that through because the suspension, the aero, the being able to do that within those rules actually is close to creating magic as far as yes. I'm concerned. So it's a very interesting thing. We are yet to see how that's going to play out because um, we don't know whether that's going to have an impact on the cornering or the speed that he's able to do on the straights, we will have to see this in, a, in, a, in an actual race environment. Because it's one thing to do it on the track by yourself, it's another thing to do it with guys on your back. <laughs> <laughs> guys, that is amazing stuff from Mercedes. We know they're melting up a challenge. Lewis Hamilton is just about to you know, contend for the seventh world title, equaling Michael Schumacher, who's the greatest one on the sport. And we can't wait to see that duel coming up with the likes of Vettel and, of course, like Clark. <laughs> So guys, on to our last news item and we are at the source of the information at Mahindra headquarters and we've learned that the tie-up between Ford and Mahindra, the joint venture, has been approved and now you start seeing cars being collaborated between the two brands and coming out into emerging markets. Mr. Murigi, how good is this news, especially for us in Sub-Saharan Africa? Well, from the source itself, we were told that they're going to do a B-segment SUV and a C-segment SUV and they're going to do some platform sharing around engines and gearboxes. Gearbox. So what this means is that we are going to be looking at the efficient low-cost production that Mahindra has been doing, partnered with that fantastic technology that Ford is doing. Putting those together is going to give us a spectacular vehicle at an incredible price. And that's something we honestly need to look forward to. Adding to the fact that the Mahindra started assembling in Africa in general, so not just in Kenya alone, we are probably going to see these cars coming in to Kenya or to the African market at reasonable prices. And that is always a spectacular thing to hear. One thing I asked the gentleman who was in charge of uh, uh, global operations is, will we ever see a Scorpio Ford Ranger sort of marriage coming soon? <laughs> and he was very coy. He didn't want to say. What do you yeah. think? Would it, would it be amazing to have a, an affordable pickup that has the platform of the capable Ranger? It well, I, I, think, I think when it comes to commercial vehicles and Mahindra, they're trying to keep it as low cost as possible. Yes. So we are probably going to see that partnership expressing itself more likely with compact SUVs, which is, as you are aware now, is one of the largest growing segments in the market right now. So the compact SUVs that Mahindra have, uh, most of them are collaboration with Sangyong. So doing that collaboration now with Ford should make something very interesting for the person on the ground.
Welcome to another interesting review courtesy of Kazu Big Boy Trap. Today we are doing things slightly different. It's in the evening. We're in Johannesburg at the Johannesburg Land Rover Experience Center. Why? Because they are launching the brand new 2019 Range Rover Evoque. Remember, this was a car that brought Victoria Beckham onto the limelight because it was built as a city car. Classy, executive, and of course, plenty of Land Rover technology to back it all up. Now, today we've just got in, we've just been given a brief um, on the safety procedures about the car, how the car is built, but now we're just about to go into an on-road and off-road session at night. I've never driven a vehicle at night with Land Rover, so it's going to be an interesting experience. And then tomorrow, we're going to go all the way to Rustenburg, drive the car, fill the car on and off-road, and then give you a value-for-money proposition with Mr. Mirigi. All known cars of Big Boy Trap. Let's go and check it out. So guys, this is the Jaguar Land Rover Center in Lone Hill. And now we are here, right? As you can see here, this is the, uh, the first generation of the Evoque. This is the convertible that was launched in 2016. And of course, right over here is the first edition of the Evoque that was launched eight years ago. I was there doing the launch and it is fun times. It's unbelievable to see that this car is now getting a midlife refresh. So guys, we've just seen the launch of the brand new Range Rover Evoque 2019. Of course, there are subtle differences as you can see. This particular LED design is straight out of the Velar. And of course, Range Rover and Range Rover Sport. And of course, you have some subtle things that we're gonna test out. Right now, we're going off-road at night. Never done that before. We're testing the new terrain response 2 system that's been infused into the whole vehicle. And of course, the setup combined with the Ingenium engine, nine-speed gearbox, and of course, the new terrain response 2 will make this car an amazing off-road as we can't wait to test it out. So. Let's get in, let's find out how this car behaves off-road. Brand new thing that uh, we're trying out today, it's off-roading and we're at the Lone Hill Experience Center by Jaguar Land Rover, testing out the capabilities and functionalities of the terrain response to that's been infused in the system. And of course you have the addition of the Ingenium engine, so time to strap up and get ready. Um, off-roading is, you know, a technical thing, so you need to really like uh, be ready, so I'm ready. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. <laughs> it just shows you how steady the chassis is. Yeehaw! I feel like a cowboy. And right now we're on three wheels, guys. Tell hill descent control is working. Cut of the terrain response to grip is being loaded to the front wheels so that you have effective braking. And you can tell the chassis is so stiff, it's 35 percent stiffer than the previous model. So they've worked a bit on the chassis department. So, guys, we are doing angle of departure and gradient. Angle of departure and not tell. Uh, guys, I think it's 45 degrees. I'm trusting the pen. The lighter pen. Listen, I'm scared, guys. I'm gonna damage a vehicle that's worth 10 million shillings. But not today, because I trust the technologies of the turn response to you. And we are off. So we've seen, it's got 45, 45 degree approach and departure angles and a bank over angle of about, uh, an obtuse angle about 120 to 30 degrees. That allows for good off-roading. Now we're getting to the wedding depth. This car has 600 millimeters of wedding depth. That is, that is impressive for such a car because 
the cars that are fighting in this category, remember we have the likes of the Q5, Audi, the BMW X3, and many other vehicles don't have that capacity to wade, to wade deep in water. This is courtesy of Land Rover's uh, wading depth system and technology. This particular car has been infused with traditional Land Rover technologies that can go through swamps, um, areas that have been flood infested and will still uh, hack it because it has a new design of the intake uh the intake ports of the vehicle in the engine so we're going to try it and find out if it can with depth and then the secret of driving through deep water is preventing backflow because backflow goes back into the engine and messes you up completely Thank you. These are the top three most affordable hatchbacks in Kenya. There are many affordable vehicles in the market, and affordable does not mean budget. These cars are basically above budget cars, and they offer an all-round features like practicality, performance, safety, and efficiency. In the Kenyan market, these cars are basically in the form of B hatchbacks, and below are some of the top three most affordable hatchbacks in Kenya. Number three. Mazda Axela. Mazda has reinvented itself in producing beautiful vehicles following the Kodo design theme of fluidity. Arguably one of the most beautiful hatchbacks on sale, the Axela has captured the hearts and minds of buyers due to its sleek profile, spacious cabin, and of course a raft of safety technologies like the iStop system, not forgetting the Skyactiv engines that offer performance and economy all in one package. With a starting price of 900,000 Kenya shillings, it offers unbelievable value for money, impressive practicality, efficiency, and safety to the family. And as far as maintenance is concerned, the costs are similar to the Impreza with minor service costing 10,000 shillings all the way to 17,000 respectively. Number two, the Subaru Impreza. The Subaru Impreza hatchback comes with a lot of heritage spanning over the 90s when Colin McRae won the Safari Rally using the Impreza. It quickly became a hollow product for Subaru as a platform where they could showcase symmetrical all-wheel drive systems, boxer engines, and of course, durability. The current crop of Impreza carries over that rally DNA and retails from Kenya shillings 1 million. One of the key reasons why it is loved is its performance. The exterior design is easy on the eye and comes with a spacious and practical premium cabin. The seats are comfortable and can do a split of 60-40 so that you can carry abnormal luggage in the car. Powered by either a 1.6 litre or 2 litre engine, you can choose your preferred choice of engine without feeling the pinch of maintenance, which by the way costs roughly from Kenya shillings 10,000 for minor service all the way to 17,000 for major service. Safety wise, it comes with 6 airbags and ABS as standard. Number 1. The Volkswagen Golf. The Volkswagen Golf has been in the Kenyan market for over four decades as a car that has good build quality. The current grey model costs roughly from 900,000 to 1.3 million Kenya shillings. It shares the same MQB platform as the Audi A3 and offers a premium feel over the Japanese rivals. The seats are quite comfortable with lumbar support plus can fold flat to accommodate extra sized luggage with ease. Safety wise, the Golf comes with a 5 star safety rating and of course, passive safety features such as airbags and ABS to ensure you and your family remain safe while on the road. It is powered by various engines from an efficient 1.4 litre turbo to a ballistic 2.2 litre turbo which is found on the club sport variant. As for maintenance is concerned, the entry-level Golf with the 1.4 litre petrol engine will cost you an average of 10,000 shillings on minor service and 20,000 for major service. In summary, this segment 
is quite competitive and the current leaders like the Mazda Axela and the Subaru Impreza give the Golf and the Toyota Aris a run for their money. Guys, it's a beautiful day. I'm in Porto, Portugal, and I'm sampling something that is green, environmentally friendly, and it's courtesy of Hyundai. This is a Ionic full electric vehicle. Now, as you know, the world is steadily moving away from fossil fuels to electric power. Why? Because it's sustainable, it's green, it's innovative. Who thought electric cars would be boring? Well, today I'm here to demystify that. Now, this particular car is the one from Hyundai. Remember, the race for electric cars is heating up. You have the likes of the Teslas who are already doing a lot of amazing things. You have OEMs like Nissan with the Nissan Leaf and uh, Toyota with the Prius, which has been here for close to 20, 25 years. And now, people like Hyundai are getting innovative with this brand new car. So what makes it different from a regular car? Well, as you can see, it looks as standard as a normal car. It's got a dashboard, it's got a steering wheel, it's got buttons here and a screen there and pedals. The active range is about 250, 260 kilometers, depending on range, speed, load, and all sorts of things. Now, the whole system of the car is set up for electric purposes. So the AC runs on electric power. Uh, obviously, the system here, the sound system, which actually has Android out and all sorts of things, has uh, it's powered basically by the battery as well, and the car dynamics as well. So one thing that I normally say about electric cars is they offer a simple solution. It it is innovation to another level in terms of safety this particular car has quite a number of features so from your basic abs to esp it now has emergency autonomous braking which stops if you do not apply brake pressure on oncoming traffic and then also it does have cross traffic alert and adaptive cruise control these are new technologies that keep you safe on the road and of course allowing you to become greener every other time. Now this particular car, practicality wise, let's talk about a proper car. It is designed well, it's got some interesting perspective, the dashboard is soft, um, it's got some checkered uh, material on top of it and it's soft touch, it feels premium. Right in the middle console you do have satellite navigation with an audio system that allows you to connect your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and of course you do have navigation that works even in Kenya. Climate control is fantastic, you do have a dual zone setup which is actually part B electric, electric power and then also you do have quite a number of knobs and switches just to control the AC because it's dual zone. Um, right here on the, on, the, on the gearbox console you do have a basic design, instead of having a traditional gearbox it's actually button. So you have park, drive, reverse and neutral. So if you're ready you just press park, it parks. If you're in a drive off you press drive and off you go. It sits five people comfortably as well. The seats are supportive. Big boys, as you can see here, is quite comfortable. There's plenty of space. Lumber support is good. Can you feel the materials are actually fantastic? And at the back, you do have space for three people. Although the middle person will have an issue sitting, but it's fine, it's three people. So moving here, at the back, you have a fast back design. So it's like a, the windscreen and the boot lid are all combined together to give you that fast back feeling. It looks like it's a station wagon, but it's a saloon. Uh, again, you have a tonneau cover to protect prying eyes from getting into and seeing your stuff. And here you have a big boot space so you can carry your groceries, your suitcases. Uh, the reach is wide. You see the tail door opens quite high, so larger objects can fit in quite easily. You can fit your stuff here. We do have a plastic uh, tray over here just to, you know, if you have dirty stuff that you're carrying. Then you have your, obviously, your service pack. You do have your um, safety equipment, tube tow hook, mobility stuff which you can connect to recharge your battery in case it goes down flat. That said, you have plenty of things. Tie down hooks are plenty. You do have a telephone socket I can see here. And of course some sound system. Looks like a, a speaker system. So you can have ample sound while in the Ionic. So, time to drive. Guys, we're inside the Ionic. Quiet, comfortable electric vehicle. This is the first time CBBT is actually testing an electric vehicle courtesy of Hyundai. Now, as we talked about uh, the future of mobility, now it's electric. Everybody's doing electric cars from the Nissan Leaf to the Teslas and everybody else, but this is Hyundai's version. Now, this one is interesting because it's an entry-level vehicle with a battery capacity 
that allows this car to produce 120 horsepower and of course 295 newton meters of torque. 295 newton meters of torque is basically the torque output of a very powerful 1.6 liter turbo diesel that allows you to literally go like this. So basically you're creeping, all right? But it gives you that linear power and it feels very smooth like you're driving a V6, yet this is an electric vehicle. Again, in terms of power delivery, there's something called uh, regeneration braking, which allows this car to recharge the batteries as you drive. The capacity allows it to literally go close to 50%. If, say, the, the range of the batteries is about, say, 300 kilometers, and you've used 175. By just energy re regeneration, you can actually drive this car and recharge it if it's half to full without any stress. And that's the beauty of this car. Hello, day two of the Range Rover Evoque Travelog series. We are now driving around Johannesburg, enjoying the different sights and sounds of Joburg in the Range Rover Evoque. It's built for the city, but also good for the long drive. So we've just gotten out of Joburg now into the outskirts, and you can see the plenty of roads out here. Very supple A roads and B roads, and I can tell you the suspension really works. It's, it's got that Magna Ride suspension system that soaks up all the imperfections and you're able to drive this car quite comfortably. The highlight of this thing is the Ingenium diesel. It's quite quiet and of course it has a lot of grunt. 400 Nm of torque all supplied to the four wheels courtesy of a nine speed gearbox that allows you to explore the full potential of this particular car and of course have a good fuel economy figure. Now we're on our first stop in a media drive. We have guests from all over Sub-Saharan Africa and now we've just taken a break getting into the car and experiencing the brand new Range Rover Evoque. So guys, we've driven the 2019 Range Rover Evoque all over Johannesburg on road, city roads, of course we've done and tackled a proper off-road course and I can tell you it's an amazing car, it's still a Range Rover with all the heritage and DNA for 70 years. Question is, would you pick this over the rivals, Mr. Murigi, who are the rivals? Well, the natural rivals for this car in this segment are the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5. Premium segment and off-road and on-road capability. Now guys, remember you can get this particular car from Inch Cape, Kenya, visit them and probably you'll probably get a discount out of it. You'll be able to choose your type of car, the kind of fabric and of course spec it to your levels. It comes again with a 5 year 150,000 kilometer warranty on it across sub saharan Africa and of course you do have also a 5 year 100,000 kilometer warranty on service. That's a deal you can't even ignore. So guys, thank you so much for joining us on this occasion of Cars Big Boy Trev. As always, I'm Murigi and I'm Big Boy Trev. Check us out on our social media handles below and tell us would you pick this over the rivals. Drive safe. Be safe.